Welcome to Kings River Life's Mystery Rats Maze podcast, where we share with you mystery short stories and first chapters of mystery novels read by actors from the San Joaquin Valley. This episode features the mystery short story, When Pigs Fly, written by mystery author Leslie A. Deal and read by local actor Sendel C. Will and May hurried along the shady avenue, eager to get to Shorty's Bake Shop on the main street of Taylorville, a small village in the Catskill Mountains of upstate New York. Once a week on Sundays, Shorty baked Will and May's favorite cupcake, his world-famous apple crunch. He always saved one for her and left it on the stoop of the shop. Everyone in the village knew better than to take the cupcake because the residents understood who it was for, and they felt it was little enough payment for Willa May's service to the town. She was considered the premier detective in the area and had received a medal from the mayor for her work taking down local drug dealers. Such an honor for anyone, and especially so since Willa May was a pot-bellied pig with a nose that could sniff out crime anywhere and the intelligence and agility to run down any criminal, human or animal. She would have preferred something edible as a reward for her work, and the metal was not, as she discovered when she tried to take a bite out of it. It almost broke her tooth and left a metallic taste on her tongue. She spit it out with a disgusted grunt. Shorty seemed to know what Willa May was feeling, a medal for a pig? How inappropriate. So began Willa May's treat each Sunday from Shorty. Today, Willa May almost bounced as she walked. Her round sides swayed to a tune only a pig could hear. Her long white eyelashes blinked with appreciation at the bright sun and her bristly snout lifted to sniff the smells emanating from the homes she passed. It was fall and she knew Shorty would use her favorite apple, Honeycrisp, to make the cupcake. A bit of drool escaped her pink lips. Horrified at her lack of manners, she looked around to be certain no one noticed. At the bake shop, she jumped up the two steps and stopped short. There was no bag on the stoop. Could Shorty have forgotten? Or could he be late in getting it out? Willa May looked through the glass door. The lights were on, but no one was moving inside. This was serious. Willa May turned and sped down the alleyway to the back of the shop. The door stood open. Now Willa May knew something was wrong. She feared Shorty had met with an accident, or he was sick, or had experienced a serious medical issue such as a stroke or heart attack. She entered the shop and found Shorty on the floor in front of his oven, his arms and legs tied with duct tape, a piece of it across his mouth. She could tell by the darting of his eyes back and forth that he was signaling her to rush to the police station for help. Willa May knew that wasn't necessary. She was here to rescue Shorty. She began to bite through the tape thinking it was as vile tasting as the metal she tried to eat. But she stuck to her task and soon freed Shorty. Some guys came in here, took all my money, and ran down the alley. Worse yet for you, Willa May, they took all my apple crunch cupcakes. I gotta call the cops. While Shorty made the call, Willa May stepped back out the door, squinted her tiny eyes to help her concentrate better, and raised her head to point her snout into the air. She took a sniff and trotted off following the smell of honey crisp apples, cinnamon, sugar, and butter. But this time, her mouth did not water. She was detecting. As she rounded the corner from the alley to the street, the scent grew less, and it mixed in with other odors from passing cars, people on the sidewalks, and the smells of dried leaves. Her squint grew tighter, and her snout pointed higher into the air. She headed past the unopened shops until she got to the quick-for-you convenience store. 
Several people sat at the outside tables enjoying their morning coffee in the warm sun. Many of them reached into bags that contained cinnamon rolls, crawlers, bear claws, and muffins. Items they may have liked, but not the cupcakes Willa May sought. Oh no, she thought. My nose has failed me. Willa May didn't like losing her cupcake, but it was more than that. She liked Shorty. He understood pigs. At least, he understood pot-bellied pigs like Willa May. He knew she wouldn't be interested in a metal, shiny though it was. She preferred something she could really sink her teeth into. A Shorty world-famous cupcake. But now, because Willa May had not done her job, Shorty might lose his business. What would he do to support himself? He might move away. Willa May couldn't bear the thought of Shorty leaving. Her eyes began to fill with tears, and she hung her head and stamped her little hoof on the pavement in despair. A breeze lifted the awning over the convenience store and blew across the bags of pastries on the tables, knocking several of them to the ground. As Willa May was about to turn and leave, she caught a whiff of honey crisp apples. A skinny man seated at a table bent down to pick up his fallen bag. I'm not eating something that fell on the ground, said the other even skinnier man at the same table. They're fine, still in the bag. Have one. The first man shoved the bag across the table to his partner. Neither of them was able to extract a honey crisp cupcake because a tiny pig, well, a pig smaller than a regular pig, made a mad dash for the table, tipping it over and upsetting the chair of one of the men. His face was red with anger and he kicked out at Willa May. Stupid pigs trying to steal our food, he said. Say, Whose pig is this? She's got an attitude. Maybe she should be made into bacon. In her usual agile way, Willa May avoided the kick, but shuddered at the word bacon. Hey! yelled Shorty, running down the sidewalk, accompanied by two uniformed police officers. That's them. Those are the guys who took my money and my cupcakes. The two men tried to run away from Shorty and the officers, and might have been able to escape, but Willa May charged them from the side. There was a tangle of thieves' legs and pigs' feet, and the two men went down. Willa May stepped to one side and watched them tumble to the ground. The officers cuffed them and led them to jail. Willa May gave a piggy smile of satisfaction as Shorty reached out and gave her ear a rub. Good work, Willa May. You deserve something special for tracking down these bums, said Shorty. Everyone watching the scene clapped their agreement. The pride in the town's detecting pigs showing in their smiling, beaming faces. There are many lessons to be learned from this story. Crime does not pay. A pot-bellied pig loves a human friend even more than she loves cupcakes. And every town should have their own pot-bellied pig detective. If you think Shorty let Willa May eat all the Honey Crisp Crunch cupcakes as her reward for tracking down the thieves, you're right. But that wasn't all he gave her. With the help of the people in the town, he bought Willa May and her owner dinner at a French restaurant in Greenwich Village, where Willa May tasted truffles for the first time. She liked them, but was eager to get home to her weekly cupcake. How did they travel to NYC? They flew in a jet, of course. So you see, pigs do fly. At least, the pot belly detecting variety do.
When Pigs Fly was produced by Kings River Life. You can learn more about Leslie A. Deal and her writing on her website, leslieadeal.com. Our theme song, The Blues, was written and played by Kevin Memley. Check out Kings River Life Magazine's websites for more mystery, local theater, animal rescue, and so much more. kingsriverlife.com and krlnews.com. We'll be back next time with another mystery short story or mystery first chapter. Subscribe to our podcast and make sure you don't miss a single episode. And follow us on Twitter to keep up with everything KRL at Kings River Life. Until next time, this is your announcer, Jim Tuck, wishing you a life full of mystery.